let's take a look at algebraic fractions. Always factorize first. The first thing you always do is factorize. Before you do anything else, you factorize. Doesn't matter what type of algebraic fraction question you got, always factorize first. Then, a bit hard to write this in words, so I use symbols. You only cancel complete parentheses and whatever's inside them, not bits of them. We love cancelling. Oh, there's an X, there's an X. Cross, cross, Y, Y. <laughs> Got to be exactly the same. Something like this, of course, we can't factorise. So we're just looking for things that top and bottom have in common. So we can cancel. And we end up with 2a squared on 3bc. So I guess that's the simplest type of algebraic fraction we could have. Now, this one can factorise. So which would I have done first? The top or the bottom, I wonder? Probably the bottom I'd factorise first. It's just got a common factor, hasn't it, of 2a. Top's got a common factor, but it's also a difference of two squares. So we'll simplify the difference of two squares. Now we can have a look and see what we can cancel. So once it's totally factorised, then we cancel. And they've got to be exactly so that p minus q will cancel with the p minus q. The a will cancel with the a, leaving us with p plus q over 2. Multiplication. Ah, multiplication of uh, fractions. Of course, what do we do with multiplication of fractions? First thing we do when we're multiplying two fractions together. What will be the first thing we do? Perhaps I didn't stress it enough. The first thing we always do with algebraic fractions is factorise. Factorise is the first thing we do. See? I would have thought that would have been the easiest question I could ask today after saying that so many times. What's the first thing we're going to do? All right, factorise. Now, some things will, some things won't. So I'll just draw up a couple of horizontal lines, but they're not called horizontal lines, of course. They're called... Anyone? Oh, sorry, what was that? It's called a vinculum. Yes, the action that word for a fraction bar is vinculum. Okay. <laughs> vinculum. V I N C U L U M N. Vinculum. Okay. X plus 1, 3x plus 1, obviously they don't factorise, but we just whack parentheses around them so that we know, right, this is a complete thing, but possibly we might cancel later on. Hmm, difference of two squares. Yeah, I reckon I did that first. Yes, I did. So 3x plus 1, 3x minus 1. Then the bottom one, we've got a quadratic trinomial. It ends up being 3x minus 1, x plus 1. You can sort of, oh, I don't want to use the word cheat. Well, it's not really cheating, it's called, it's called using common sense. Because you know if they're giving you an algebraic fraction question in this situation, there's probably going to be things that cancel. So let's go back a step. Hmm, I wonder what this could factorise to be. Well, 3x plus 1 will cancel in the 3x plus 1. Hey, there's a really strong chance that either 3x plus 1, sorry, 3x minus 1 or x plus 1 is going to be a factor. It's always a good idea to check if you do it that way, by the way, just in case, doesn't it seem? Well, everything cancels there and I'm just left with one. So it doesn't matter what we substitute into that first line, we'll always get the answer one. All right, division's different, of course. With the, the, we do it differently to multiplication. So with a division, the first thing we do would be, when you're dividing fractions, what's the first thing you do when you're dividing fractions? Sorry? Yeah, normally it would be you'd get the reciprocal, but of course this is an algebraic fraction, so the first thing we do is factorise. <laughs> I end up doing both in one step. So you are right, we turn it upside down to make it a multiplication. Uh, the 3a doesn't factorise, 6a squared b doesn't. Uh, which one? Yeah, the common factor one looks easier. So b outside of a minus 2b. And is that a perfect square, the other one? It is, isn't it? So we get a minus 2b all squared. And we've got some cancer. The 3 goes into the 6 and so on and so on. We end up with 1 on 2a, a minus 2b. Well, addition and subtraction of fractions. Well, before we can add and subtract fractions, what have we got to do? Factorise. Very good. So we'll factorise that. But... Unlike multiplication and division where we just multiply across, we have to get ourselves a common denominator. 
Or as I like to say, if it's not there, put it down. That's how you create your common denominator. So you draw yourself a vinculum, and then to work out your common denominator, you just go from left to right and ask yourself the question. If it's not there, I'll put it down. So A, it was not there, so I put it down. A minus one, it was not there, so I put it down. A, oh, it's there, fine. A plus one, oh, it's not there, so I'll put it down. There's my denominator. So I know all the factors are there. Now to work out the numerator, I ask myself, well, what's different? So that first fraction, the denominator was a, a minus one. What, what's different? Well, the difference is I now have a factor of a plus one. So uh, whatever you do to the top, you must do to the bottom. So the top becomes a plus one squared. But then we're going minus, and now we look at the second fraction. What's different? Oh, there's this factor of a minus one that wasn't there before. So that's what I multiply the top by. So minus a minus one squared. We can't cancel yet. Because before we cancel now, what have we got to do? Factorize. Because unfortunately now the numerator is no longer factored. We've got a minus sign in between two terms. It's not factored. So I've got a perfect square minus another perfect square. Oh, well, that uh, makes life easy. Did I do it the long way, expand the whole thing out? Yeah, I did. Oh, I went the long way. Expanded the whole thing out, tidy it up, we get 4a. The quick way of doing that one would have been perfect square minus perfect square. And they're basically the same perfect square. The sign in the middle is different. So they're both going to produce a squared, 2ab and b squared. So if I'm subtracting, the a squared and the b squared, of course, have to cancel. I'm really only worried about the 2ab. So the first one's going to be plus 2ab, or in this case 2a, but then we'll go minus minus the 2a. So I'm going to get four times the product for this one, which is 4a. So that we Again, it's just making use of the patterns that we know. Uh, oh, a will cancel. So there we go. 4a minus 1, a plus 1. Let's do one with three. There's no different factor. Oh, that was nice. It's already factorized the first two for me. But the, uh, the last one, difference of two squares. Okay, if it's not there, put it down. X plus Y squared, not there, put it down. X minus Y squared, not there, put it down. X plus Y, well, it's there because it's inside the X plus Y squared. So if you have two terms, but to different powers, you always need the highest power. So we need the power of 2 for the x plus y, we need the power of 2 for the x minus y. There's our denominator. Okay, what's different? Well, the first one, it's the x minus y squared. The second one, it's the x plus y squared. And the last one, uh, well, be an x plus y, x minus y, which of course is a difference of two squares. So again, I probably did it the long way again, but we could say, hang on, perfect square plus perfect square. So this time it's plus. So the middle term is going to cancel this time, the two ABs, or two XYs in this case. So I'll have two lots of X squared plus two lots of Y squared, but then I'm going to subtract two lots of the difference of two squares. So hang on, I've got two X squared plus 2y squared, but then I'm going to subtract two lots of x squared minus y squared, minus minus is a plus, I should end up with, I think, 4y squared, 4y squared. Let's see what happens. Expand it all the way out, collect like two, yes, there you go, 4y squared. Remember what I said yesterday, if you're making mistakes, don't do that much in your head, like I just did, all right? More steps you put down, less chance of making a silly mistake. Um, no, nothing cancels there. So that's our answer. Okay. So that's 1D algebraic fractions.